This is AEDT 2150U Digital Technologies and Advanced Teaching Methods and this is the first of the video capsules that we will be using to discuss social constructivist teaching. When we ask teachers about the learning approach they adopt in their classrooms, most of them assert that they adopt a social constructivist approach. We often hear them explain, I encourage collaboration among my students I regularly pair them up or put them in groups to discuss scenarios or work on projects. I even give them group homework, which prompts them to continue on working together even outside the classroom. I am a social constructivist teacher. Social constructivism is nowadays buzzword and teachers declare adopting its methods without really understanding its underlying learning theory. So let us look at the origin of this learning theory. But first, let us go over the analysis questions. Define Vygotsky's sociocultural perspective of learning. Explain the role of the zone of proximal development in learning. And explain the role of inner speech in learning. Vygotsky, a Russian psychologist and the founder of the sociocultural theory, explains, an interpersonal process is transformed into an intrapersonal one. Every function in the child's cultural development appears twice, first on the social level and later on the individual level, first between people and then inside the child. This applies equally to voluntary attention, to logical memory and to the formation of concepts. All the higher mental functions originate as actual relations between human individuals. In other words, Vygotsky argues that social interactions are at the core of the cognition, de cognitive development. According to this theory, a child acquires knowledge and skills based on the culture he or she is raised in. In a culture where children accompany adults to take the metro, these children learn how to buy their metro tickets, consult the metro map to see which direction to take and in from which station to exit. They learn how to make connections and how to stay safe. A child who lives in a country that has no metros or even proper public transportation would not know how to do all of that. Another example can be of a child who sees his or her mother making bread every morning and sometimes comes and helps her uh, make the bread. And one morning, he or she surprises his or her mother with fresh hot bread before she goes to work because all along they were learning how to do the bread. Another child who has never witnessed an adult preparing bread will have no idea about the ingredient to mix nor how much time to leave the dough in the oven. According to Vygotsky, learning is embedded within social events and occurs as a child interacts with people, objects and events in the environment. Vygotsky also discusses another idea in his theory. He explains that when guided by an expert adult or peer, a child can attain more cognitive development than by being alone. There are tasks that children cannot do on their own and others they can do on their own. According to Vygotsky, in order for a child to master a skill, he or she would need the help of a skillful and knowledgeable adult or peer. The child starts by observing the expert performing, then tries to perform the task with the help of the experienced adult or peer. As the child gradually masters the action, the expert withdraws. Vygotsky calls this the phase, uh, the, the phase of the zone of proximal development. In addition to the zone of proximal development, Vygotsky explains that language plays critical roles in cognitive development. He believes that language develops from social interactions and then becomes internalized as thought and inner speech. Jones wrote that he, the capacity to think to ourselves, to inwardly reflect on what we are doing, to guide our own actions purposefully and self-consciously depends on inner speech, a special adapted inner form of language use, which according to Vygotsky's premise, must derive from the external practice of using language in dialogue with others. While all Vygotsky's work was doing with children, one can easily see how this, his theory applies to adult learning. Think about when you had your last job and you started your training to get accustomed to the ways of that business. Or perhaps you didn't get any training and you wish you had received one. 
There are many similarities between Vygotsky's sociocultural theory and learning and, uh, and of learning and Bandura's modeling. According to Bandura, social learning based on observation and learning start by the learners paying attention to the skill they want to learn, performed by another person with whom they, the learners can easily relate or identify. The learners then retain the procedure and, if motivated, they produce or perform the skill. Let us have a look at Bandura's well-known experiment and the origin, origin of social learning theory, the Boba Doll experiment. And you can look at the, uh, you have the link, the YouTube link, where you can go and look at the, um, the, the experiment. In this video, an adult modeled an aggressive behavior towards the doll, while the children observed. Then, when left alone, the children behaved similarly to the behavior they had seen. We can think of other examples where a child learns through social observation. If we think of a child, for example, who puts back the toys he or she has played with after he or she has finished. The teacher is happy, she congrat congratulates him or her and gives him or her a sticker. Meanwhile, other children are watching. They saw the teacher's reaction and the reward that their friend has received. They learned that by putting back the toys, the teacher will be happy and they will be rewarded. So naturally, they behave similarly and expect the same reaction. However, we know that in some cases it doesn't work. And we can discuss these exceptions during the tutorial session. Think of examples from your own experiences that involve social learning or sociocultural learning. And also think about non-examples of social learning. This video capsule did an overview of the origin of social learning, which is the origin of a socio, uh, of a socio or social constructivist approach to teaching. Let's analyze our beginning scenario over again. We said that many teachers claim that they adopt a socio constructivist approach to teaching. However, we noticed that adopting a social constructivist or socio constructivist approach is not as easily done than said. So, how can we create a course where students actually construct their own knowledge through their interactions with their peers, teachers, and others? Remember, for teachers to safely say that they adopt a social constructivist approach, they should encourage participation, encourage interaction among their students and with experts, engage their students in meaningful activities, and promote reflective thinking and problem solving. In addition, their evaluation should be based on the process of learning socially rather than solely on the product of the end. The synthesis questions. How can a socio or social constructivist teaching and learning approach be implemented with adults? Can you hypothesize on the challenges that an adult learning learner might face when engaging in socio or social constructivist learning activity? What can course designers and teachers do to create courses or activities in a socio or social constructivist approach to teaching and learning?